Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, stop tapping your foot. You're getting me nervous. Oh, am I tapping my foot? I didn't know. Mom, I'm starting to feel stood up. Well, then why don't you sit down on that suitcase? I feel stood up, sitting down. (laughs) I wonder where David is. He'll be along any minute. Not so far from here to the garage. He shouldn't be taking this long. Oh, leave that poor boy alone, Claudia. I feel kind of silly standing around on the sidewalk with all this stuff strewn around. Since when do you get embarrassed? Oh, I'm not embarrassed. I just feel silly. That's nothing new. Baby doesn't seem to mind. Look, Mama, he's sound asleep in his carriage. Think in a couple of hours we'll be back on the farm. If David ever gets here from the garage... Leave the poor boy alone, Mama. Really, you are impossible. It's one thing for you to say something. It's quite another thing for me to say it. Hmm? That (laughs) is a brilliant observation. On second thought, we don't have so much stuff to bring back, do we? Your second thought is wrong. I still think we should have hired a truck. Oh, nonsense. David's wonderful at packing cars. He'll be able to fit everything in with room left over. That I will have to see. You will, you will. Hey, what's in that little box over there? That little box? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. I better open it to make sure we want it with us. Don't you touch it. Why not? It belongs to me. Since when are you so private? Since always. Though I get little chance. Oh, tell me what's in it. I will not, and that's final. Oh, see if I care. Say, what about the baby's bottle? He's due to have it in about, oh, half an hour. It's nestling in the carriage right beside him. I have it wrapped up so it won't get too cold. Mama, you're so brilliant. You act as though you had experience with lots more babies than just me. Are you sure you, you didn't? You were all the experience I needed. There's David now. Yoo-hoo! Claudia, Yoo-hoo! Shh. He sees you. Everything ready, darling? Everything's been ready for half an hour. It's about time you got here. I break my neck, and this is the thanks I get. Pay no attention to her, David. Claudia, why is it we always have more stuff when we leave a place than when we arrive there? That doesn't make any sense. Well, we came to Mama three weeks ago with with just a couple of valises. And now, look. Well, we've acquired a few things. We certainly have. Can't help that. A few things. It looks like you've acquired a, a whole department store. I suppose you'd like me to leave them behind. Mm Mm-hmm, that would help. I suppose you'd like to leave the baby behind since we've acquired him since we've been in New York, too. Oh, that would help even more. Stop quibbling, children. Let's get started. Don't quibble. What's in this big box? Ouch. Filled with rocks. Rocks? (laughs) What would I be carrying rocks to Connecticut for? Our place is full of rocks. This is no time for whimsy. What's in this? That is mine, and no questions will be answered. Mom has a secret. It's about time. What's in this crate? Oh, just a few books I received since the hospital. Well, if I thought you'd ever read them, I wouldn't mind so much. And say, that's an idea. What? For lugging them back to Eastbrook, I'm going to make you read every single one of these. Honestly, Mama, what gets into men? They don't like bundles. But that's half the point of traveling. Maybe it'd be simpler to pack up the car and carry this stuff. Very funny. I dread to think of repeating this process at the other end. Oh, it won't be so bad. Undressing's always easier than dressing. Now, let's see. Now, I suggest you stop grumbling and get going. Hmm. We'd be in Eastbrook already if you weren't making such a fuss. I wonder where we can fit in the baby carriage. Hey, wait a minute. Let me take the baby out of it. Give him to me. Now, here you are, skeezix. You go to your grandmother. Can't imagine why, but she wants you. Don't you dare open your mouth. Or Hmm. else... Maybe I should take out the back seat and put the carriage in there. Back seat? No, the baby carriage. Won't it fit in the trunk? Now, what do you think? Hmm, I guess it won't. Too many wheels. I'll have to put the valise in the trunk. How many are there? Only five. Three big, two small. Is that all? That's all. Listen, David, if we didn't have to take the spare tire, we'd have room. Don't you dare even suggest it. Haven't you learned your lesson? All right, all right, all right. I was only trying to help. Carriage won't fit in there. I'll have to put it in the back, and then the four of us will have to sit in the front. <laughs> it's a good thing the baby isn't grown up yet. <laughs> it certainly is. 
You know, I think we ought to stand the little one up on the side, and the three big ones can go one on top of the other, and then the little one Get can go on... Get away from me. Get away from me. I don't know why you can't bear to have some good advice. Get away. What about tying the carriage on top of the car? You know, like skis. Oh, great, great. great. David, I have an idea. You too, Mama. You can put all the coats and small boxes in the carriage. Yes. Then we can put the boxes and... Oh, no. No, I guess it wouldn't work. Of course, we could send the car up by itself, and then we could take the train. I wouldn't mind. Oh, but think how all the other people on the road would feel, seeing a car on the road with nobody driving it. Now, let me get these valises in. I feel like an Armenian peddler standing here on the <laughs> sidewalk with all these boxes around. You look like a peddler. You are mean, but that's the only Armenian thing about you. Ooh. Claudia, men don't appreciate jokes at a time like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, not this way. This one's too tall. Lay it sideways. Shut up. Mama, listen to how he talks to me. I don't blame him. I'll try and get the carriage in the car, darling. They just can't bear to park with anything. David, don't look around now, but there's a man watching you. Probably fascinated at how henpecked a man can be. Looks like a sidewalk engineer to me. He's coming over. See you, David. Here. Say, uh, look. Hmm? Just a uh, suggestion, my friend. Yes. Uh... Now, oh, wait a minute, look. Why not prop the two little suitcases on their sides in the corner, then the three large ones will sit in the center? Yeah, I've tried that, but they don't fit. Doesn't? No. Well, what do you know? That's very strange. Very strange indeed. My wife went to great lengths to choose them so they wouldn't. Oh, married, huh? Yes, I'm married, and I'm trying not to lose my temper. You uh, moving today? Yes, yes, we're we're moving. You're very fortunate to find another apartment. Well, we haven't found another apartment. You haven't? Hello, David. How are you doing? Terrible. Mm. Oh, darling, I don't think the carriage is going to fit in the back either. No. Did you say you were moving, but you haven't found another apartment? Yes, that's exactly what I said. Ah, this one fits in sideways better. Well, that's terrible. Yeah, it is terrible. Oh, because now there's no room for the leather bag. Well, how about propping please, it up with something? Please, darling, please. Well, then why are you moving? Because I like packing the car. Oh, wait a minute. There's nothing to get sore at. Now, you're moving without a new place? If you must have an answer, we've been evicted. David! Evicted? You mean evicted? That's what happened. Evicted, huh? Oh, David, wasn't it terrible? Yes, turned out of our apartment, forced to leave suddenly, made to pack all our belongings into the car and move. Well, you know, that's one of the most terrible things I've ever heard of. What happened? You, you say you were evicted. We had a baby and the landlord, well, need I say more? He was so hard-hearted about it. A poor, harmless little boy. Mm. There he is in his poor old grandmother's arms. He picked it. What do you know about that? Yes, she has to move, too. Don't let Mommy hear you talking about her like that. Say, well, this is one of the most terrible stories I've ever heard. Say, look here. Have you, uh, have you called the authorities? What well, good would it do? If, if it's this kind of a world where families have to be turned out into the street, well, that's the kind of a world it is. Well, Come on, Claudia, hand me the little suitcase. We'll try to find a home for it, too. I ought to throw it at you. Are you sure there isn't some way I can help? Anything I can do to help? No, no, don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do except, well, it's nice to have met you. You know, I think you're all very courageous. Well, we really don't have very much to be courageous about, but... Are you sure I can't do anything to help you? I'm sure. We'll get along some way. So, you know, I've got a suggestion. If you put the big fat one on the bottom... It might fit a lot better that way. Well, thanks. Aren't you ashamed? No, I'm not ashamed. You ought to be pulling that man's leg like that, strumming on his heartstrings. He turned out to be pretty nice. I can't stand sidewalk kibitzers. <clears throat> well, say, it does go in the way he said. Well, what do you know? When are we going to get underway? It's almost time for the baby's bottle. Let the baby wait. It's time he did his share. There. I guess this is as good as I can get the back of the car. We'll put this one under your foot. 
so no grass will grow. Now I'll get the carriage in, and the coats and boxes will be all set. You see, it hasn't been so bad. Uh, eh, just a little wide. Don't scrape the paint off. That's the least of my worries. There. Now the coats and the boxes. And... Claudia, yep. Claudia, get in front and take the baby. Mommy, you get next to her and close the door quickly so nothing falls out. It's so bossy. Hand me the baby, Mama. Here he is, Claudia. Move over and make room for me. Mm. Now, take a deep breath, Mama. Well, here we are, all on our way to Eastbrook. I can hardly believe it. Now, David, you less grumpy now that everything's fit into the car? I knew it would. I never have been grumpy. Now, move over. Make room for me. I moved over as far as I can move over. But your son, he's so fat. Uh, at last. I hope the tires hold out. Wouldn't it be funny if we had to unpack the car to get the spare tire on? <laughs> I apologize for her, David. She has a misplaced sense uh, of humor. Are we all set? All set. Wait a minute, David. Don't start the car. What's the matter now? The black frying pan. What about it? I have to go upstairs and get it. You what? I left it in Mama's stove. David, it's the most wonderful frying pan in the whole world for bacon. I'll only be a second. We're going to Eastbrook without the black frying pan. It can't. It's such a gorgeous frying pan. It's black and dirty. It is not. It just looks dirty because it's black, but it's clean. I'll buy you a new one. It's not the same thing. It takes years and years to train a black frying pan. It's like antiques. Then we'll have to do without it. You are heartless. David, please let me get out of the car to get it, please. What do I do now, Mrs. Brown? Pay no attention to her. Just start the car and let's be on our way. Oh, the two of you. You have no understanding. I have understanding. The black frying pan is in that heavy box. Oh. I was a little embarrassed to say so, but I wouldn't go a step without it either. Oh, Mama, now I love you as much as the frying pan. Now, Mrs. Brown, you have no idea how I love you. Well, let's go. It's no accident that Coca-Cola has become such a favorite with young people. It belongs with friendly occasions. It's delicious and wholesome. And it only costs a nickel a bottle. Why not have your grocer put a case of Coke in the car this afternoon? With Coke on ice, the young people in your house can play host to their friends in great style. That makes them feel good, and it makes you feel good, too. Say, my friend, uh, did those people really have a place to go? Oh, yes. Yes, they do. A, a rather nice place at that. They'll be getting to their farm tomorrow. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear it. Did the uh, gentleman get all those pieces of his puzzle put together? Just about. They left a minute ago. Oh. I'd like to have seen how he packed the car. Didn't think he could do it. I got the same job coming up. The wife and I are going off for two weeks. Well, I wish you a pleasant vacation. Thanks, friend. It'll be okay if the little woman doesn't pack too many duds. Well, so long. Well, so long, and thanks for your help. If all goes well, we'll hear the big arrival home tomorrow. Till then, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>